These are screens designed by Vicki Scurry, an artist who works most commonly with transportation projects. I bring vision and sight together in a way that really works with community identity and sense of place. And I think that's what artists, if they're good, that's what they're bringing to the team, is this vision that could easily be transformative in this site. And I just sort of thought, you know, this is a really good fit. I would love to work here. And I'd love to make this come alive in a way that is unexpected. I think public art adds a sense of spirit and a sense of soul to the built environment. And it adds mystery and surprise and all these sort of perceptual experiences that might not be there otherwise. But it's this sort of spiritual aspect of it that really, I think, elevates the human soul. So it's so much more than nuts and bolts and just getting from here to there. It's about curing your spirit through the day, through the year, through the months. I think a lot of art draws your attention to temporal events like to wind and phenomena that aren't necessarily in the purview of engineering or even architecture. And I think public art is one of the vehicles that can get you there. I've always been interested in creative projects since I was a little kid. Somehow or another, I found myself in public art. And it's been a really great fit for me because it's sort of a multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary field. It's definitely influenced my work. In fact, you can see the big influence of printmaking in the Kettering Project. Even though it's three-dimensional and it's made of metal and it's laser cut and it's huge compared to a print, there's a lot of influence that I see it from my printmaking days and the discipline I got from being a printmaker and also the sort of socialization that you get as an artist in printmaking is totally different than being in a, just a studio by yourself. And I think that's why I like working on teams so much, because it's more like being in a studio with other artists. So I moved to Seattle and I started looking into doing more like installation art. And so I started first by cutting up my prints and doing collages and things like that. Then I started doing things more in three dimensions, using found objects and things that I created space from. And I could still use printmaking, but in this case, in the form of projection art. So I was involved with projectors and lighting and sound. And so I kind of went from printmaking in the 2D to printmaking in the 3D in installation format. But it kind of moved me into more of a, an, an installation focus on different types of materials and different types of spaces and how you move through a space and create placemaking. And all that started way back when. And what artists bring is kind of an out of the box look at it. Because I think a lot of engineering is cookie cutter. You know, it's like we've done this bridge, we'll just kind of modify it, fit it to the site. And, you know, we'll put it there and you can buy that railing and this and that. And adding artists, I think, adds yet another dimension because you get beyond just the practical and the functional to the spiritual and the soulful, you know, and the poetic. I think the site review was key for me, you know, going out there and then meeting everybody in the selection committee and people really wanted to get something done. They wanted something significant and they were willing to get behind it and do what it would take to do it. And then when I went to Dayton History, I found that was the spirit of the place. And it had been gone on that way for you know, over a hundred years because of the whole invention thing and all the inventors. And, you know, so I was really inspired by how the history influenced, you know, both the past and the present and that how I could bring it forward. A lot of the inspiration for the art installation with the bridge was taken in part from the decorative stained glass and woodwork in the inner urban car on display here. If we look at the transportation corridors, the, the, the New Chants Bridge is part of the transportation corridors. Early on, you've got the Great Miami River, which is right close to it. Within 100 yards was the Miami Erie Canal, and intersecting that is going to be the inner urban line that runs along Dixie Highway. And the inner urbans were to connect city to city. They were extremely popular prior to the interstates to hop on an inner urban, or as they called them, a traction car and fly to a city. And these were electrically uh, powered larger trolleys that would reach speeds of 70 miles an hour. And it was an extremely efficient way of getting around. So one of those paths went right by the Fushan's Bridge. So as a great compliment to it, Dayton, Ohio had uh, the Barney and Smith Car Works. And Barney and Smith was the largest employer in the region starting in 1849 and it really took a hit in the 1913 flood, was out of business by 1921, but we were supplying a lot of the country with these not only luxury cross-country cars, but interurban cars. We have a Barney and Smith built luxury cross-country coach 
with inlaid mahogany and electric and oil lamps, mohair seats. It's, it's really a brilliant car. And then when I went into the museum, I spent a full day there. And then because our place was on a trolley line, they also had a museum room full of trolleys, right? So I went and looked at the trolleys and they had all this beautiful deco stained glass, you know, just this evocative curvilinear stuff that related back to nature. And then they had wing forms in them. Plus there's the whole flight thing going on in, you know, basically in Dayton with the Wright brothers. So wings were kind of a prominent image that I thought about. And then a butterfly is a symbol of transformation. And it seems like Dayton and Kettering are both in the position again to want to be transformed. But at this point in time, there's again a lot of momentum and energy and you know a transforming energy there. So I thought butterfly would be a perfect thing. It's like a symbol of death and rebirth. And then also the wings created diamonds and diamonds are a symbol of strength and power. So I thought the whole idea of strength, power and transformation, I mean, that's what our lives should be like, right? <laughs> Barney & Smith was Dayton's largest employer, and, and uh, what replaced it as the largest employer was the National Cash Register Company. And because now you're dealing with a machine that does not appreciate the expansion and contraction of wood, they go to metal cases and metal surroundings. And so they start to bring in some of the most skilled, not only artisans in castings and, and foundry work, but the artists that design these things and, and, and commissioning the design of some of these gorgeous brass and nickel plated cash registers that were coming out of Dayton, Ohio. I wanted it to have an organic quality because as I mentioned, the whole idea of flight and flow and, and the deco imagery that I was looking at was all kind of curvilinear. And then the towers, because of the way that it's a split braid situation, so you have a really different experience entering or leaving Kettering, and they both need to work. And it's hard, I think, on the entrance part to, to really realize that could be the gateway because it's only on one side and it doesn't necessarily catch your attention. So the tower does. The tower kind of stands out there and catches your attention and causes you to look to the left. We worked with several stakeholders that live around this site or own businesses around here. And we also worked with Dayton History and Calvary Cemetery. The concept of the artwork was completely open to the artist. She came to the site, she did the research, she talked to the community and felt like the art screens that are now being installed on the bridge were the best solution for creating a gateway into and out of Kettering. So it's visible from both north and south heading on Dixie. It's sort of a challenging site in terms of the way the north and the south traffic run as well as over and under the bridge and the different elevations. So I think she created a really successful monument to Kettering. I will say that this has been an incredible moment to see this come to fruition. And after talking about it for three years and looking at drawings and construction documents and to actually see it in person is definitely a dream come true. We're honored that, that the, some of the inspiration to the bridge artwork is based on part of our collection. And so this artwork is based on some of the same stories that we're telling and trying to preserve. So I'm pleased that the city saw it to call on us to see if we could help in some way. And it's great, it's a nice little marriage. I guess I'd hope they would smile because I think it's kind of an evocative piece and it presents itself in phases. It's going to look different in the day and different at the night. And the shadow gardens that are created by it, like the shadow patterns on the sidewalk, you know, a lot of people don't even think about things like that until they've experienced it. And it's like an aha, oh my gosh, it creates patterns on the sidewalk. And then at night, it's different too because it's backlit on one side and fully lit on the other side. And so you get, again, these changes of experience and perception. And so I think what I'd like people is just to pause and reflect and to perhaps smile because it's like a welcoming gesture to Kettering.